Hello everyone, today we're looking at one of the, no actually we're not, we're not looking at one of them. Today we're looking at two of these. Yeah, for some reason I got two of these. Um, now fortunately both are in remarkably bad shape. Um, well, at least the bags are, these have gathered dust in storage. Uh, unfortunately none of them were covered. Uh, well, it caked in dust anyway, but uh, this is a Philips uh, transportable. Uh, this is an MCR40 Philips, uh, if that means anything to y'all. Um, and um, I bought these quite some years ago. Uh, certainly, I remember actually buying one, uh, buying one of them. I don't know why I ended up with two. So uh, we're just going to look at one, but I'll show you this one. Um, this is what the handset looks like um, on one of them. Um, and then... This is what the handset looks on the other one. It's pretty much the same phone. So uh, we'll look at this one because it's the one that's ready to rock. So I'll move this out of the way for you guys. Um, so uh, straight off the bat, you can see there's um, a little short strap, which um, obviously this guy had to carry it around like a bag or a man bag. Um, and then uh, a shoulder strap as well, which um, he's got connected. So not too sure why you'd have both. You'd probably have one or the other. But anyway, um, this phone stems from an era where um, bag phones like this were uh, not too common, actually. Um, I think this is probably uh, an early 90s phone. Um, I don't actually know the date of, uh, of when these were made. But uh, certainly, um, because this is analog, this operated on ETAX, um, I would say probably early 90s. Because, I mean, GSM launched, what, 91, 92 in some places? So uh, why would you have one of these over a, a smaller GSM phone? Uh, it doesn't quite make sense. So um, I think this might even be late 80s. Um, I don't know the exact date. If you guys know by any chance, um, drop me a comment. It'd be interesting to hear from you. But um, So basically, the phone came in a bag. You got a nice little pouch up the front here with a Philips logo, the old school Philips logo there as well. Um, and um, not much else, really. Um, you got this thing up here, which you could... Uh, have open or closed and you've got a little hole here and the reason for that will become apparent shortly um, there's a little a little tiny little pocket here where the antenna slots in conveniently and um, actually I think I've put this phone in wrong because the antenna lifts up like that and I think that should be turned around so and this weighs quite a bit you guys don't realize how heavy this thing is um, but anyway so um, the antenna goes up in here like so screws on even though that's a BNC and you would have that like so um, and you would carry that around um, and if you're so inclined you'd uh, put a little bit of a speck of paint there and let it gather dust um, and this is after I've actually cleaned it up a little uh, so this is uh, in, in remarkably bad shape but um, this was the only one that was available at the time. I've not seen an MCR40 in some years. So um, I don't know how rare these are. I have virtually not much info um, about this phone. I do, however, have the manual. Um, got a couple of things here. This is a user's guide. You got some operating instructions. Um, and what's important to note is there was two versions of this phone. There was obviously this one here with the handset like so. And then there was the car style version, which had obviously the, the display um, at 90 degrees. Uh, it's the same phone, same transceiver base unit and everything. Uh, and you got a user callback, user guide. Uh, this was obviously for their um, voicemail or whatever it was, callback service. I'm not too sure how to listen to your messages. Yeah, so that would have been voicemail. Um, so actually, when was this printed? 1991 this was printed. So early 90s, basically. Is there a date on the back of this thing? Uh, 1988, actually. That says 1990, uh, 1988, I should say. Issue 3, version 6. The same for that. Philips Telecoms. And which one's that? That's the user guide. So that says copyright 1988. I'm guessing this was released probably 98. Uh, sorry, 88, rather. 1988, uh, maybe early 1989. Um, so gives you the idea of how old this phone is um, so anyway but um, what's important is that you also got a little cable like this because uh, this this was inherently a car phone in a bag 
um, and and this weighs, uh, I don't know, but I, I think, I mean, I, with your arm out, I, I struggle, I struggle to lift that, to give you some sort of idea, and I'm not a small bloke either, um, you know, I work out of the gym, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm not, I'm not a skinny bloke, I'm, I'm quite built, so uh, I, I would say this is probably four kilos, uh, I don't know what that is in pounds, but uh, what is it, 2.2 pounds to the kilo something like that so it's gotta be gotta be like 10 pounds it's this is not light at all so but anyway um you got a little cable here um which conveniently you could actually unscrew the antenna's got the original Phillips logo there uh and this is where the bnc comes in because you could plug that in there and uh, you could actually mount the antenna on here like so um, and you could obviously, um, there was a metal thing that clipped between the silver thing and the, uh, and the black thing, and you could probably clamp that somewhere, but, um, but anyway. Um, so, uh, let me try and fire this bad boy up. Um, put this back in here. Um, oh, and you also got, um, MCR brief operating instructions. Uh, do not dial while well driving. Great big sign there. Power on, making a call. Actually, this might be useful when I go, I go through the menu. Uh, memory, scroll, carousel. Carousel. Holds last five different telephone numbers. Dials, sequential pressing of recall steps through da da da. Uh, okay, what else we got? Uh, I can't read that handwriting. Doesn't really sell you much, but um, I might actually look at that. Um, really important, that. So, um, let me quickly fire this up. Um, I do actually have the um the um the power cable for this which is really useful because without a power cable um you wouldn't be able to power this up but this is the power cable for it this is what came with it um one of them anyway um and um this is a, a, an old school type uh, cigarette car adapter um you might recognize the old school ones with the little red clip-ons like this um th these are real old school these are uh, what the car cigarette um, sockets used to take nowadays obviously um, they're they're, um, they're they're more akin to this this is a more modern one the um, the, the, the really old-school ones were tiny they were only this sort of size uh, with a with a little center pin like this so um, you don't really need that anymore so but anyway um, so I'm gonna plug this guy in I've got my um, 12 volt 6 amp power supply up here um, plug this sucker in like so if I can get the guy in and now I don't remember where the actual the actual power inlet to this was move the bag out the way so looking at the phone then you got I can't believe it there's a nail there what the heck is that about I've inherited a, a, a great big nail as well. You gotta be kidding me. How about that? How'd that get in there? Yeah, nice little rusty nail. Okay, well, so this is, I'm gonna hold this with both hands because this is real heavy. This is what the phone looks like. It's got a great big stinking um, heat sink at the bottom. Got six feet there. Um, got a power connector there. The antenna thing. Um, it's really useful because this swivels, so obviously um, you could have it in any direction. But you're supposed to carry, you're supposed to carry this. I can't even lift that. You're supposed to carry this like so with this handle. Um, so yeah, I've uh, got the green sticker there. So this was definitely for the UK because that's the um, the telecoms approved sticker for the UK. Um, and I think you can actually take this apart. Um, I'm not too sure how though, and I'm ruining my display here. Um, that's how heavy this thing is that the phones keep the, the phones fall off the display um, So that comes under like so um, AP4011, but anyway, um, let's power this guy up Got a, a, a battery meter there as well, which probably won't show you anything because the battery's long dead um, Move the nail out the way get the cable. This is a regular three pin it's not an XLR, but I guess it's uh, some sort of other three pin. That plugs into here like so. And does this screw on? There we go. Um, so right off the bat, I don't know if you guys can see that. 
but that's flashing no service um it did actually oh the cable's not not making contact very well oh, that's not great is it look at this connector here it's not the best of build quality um but um, i'm gonna try and make make do with that we'll have to try and hold it in it's it's a screw on type so that should that should hold on but anyway uh so yeah this has got like a, an orange glow screen quite unique really not many phones have orange screens uh if you checked out uh i think it was the aa roadside phone uh that had a, a ready sort of orange screen um orange screens aren't aren't very common at all so um but anyway um power button and send clear store recall mute time HF, I'm not too sure what that is, um, but time obviously shows you the last call. Um, where's that little thing I had earlier? Let me sift through this and actually try and work this phone. Uh, so, hold last five different, so let's try, let's try and press recall. Um, so, it doesn't actually even tell you what the last done maybe the battery's dead on this and it didn't store it i'm not too sure so scroll press pound key this doesn't tell you anything okay recall press and release until required number is displayed then press um okay well that don't work not that the antenna would make any difference but um, so, um, I would say, press and release, recall, no, well, let's try that, press and release, until required, this, either the button doesn't, well, no, the button does work, because the lights come on, not too sure how to work this, press, pound, then press and hold recall, to read location number, okay, that, and then press and hold recall, end that's not what it should do actually okay so making a call enter full telephone number all right then not that this is actually going to work because there's no service but let's try 1-800-555-2288 see what this thing does send it's got a I don't know if you guys can hear that, but at least the thing says in use come up. Um, not much else I can show you, I'm afraid, with this. For some reason, all this stuff doesn't seem to work. Um, I've tried recall and send. Pressing the pound and star keys doesn't do much. Um, scratch pad. Lock. Clear two seconds, four digit lock code, actually. I'm not going to try that because I don't know what the unlock code is. And if I lock this phone, I'm not going to be too happy because I don't know anybody that would be able to unlock this. Certainly not nowadays. Um, <laughs> I think if you were a cell phone retailer back then in 1989 and you knew how to unlock this, chances are you're probably retired by now. So, But um, interestingly, this has got a little slidey switch here. Actually, it's not a switch. It's um, You can actually... It's, it's um, I don't know what you would call it, but it's, you barely move it, but it is obviously for something. My guess is it's volume, but you can't hear the thing. So, um, does this tell you, uh, you know, I dumped that. I'm going to just try and try and go through the manual. Got the manual, might as well use it. But <laughs> you'll notice that the manual only has eight pages believe it or not um battery management oh actually this is just basic operation this ain't a manual so yeah this is how it it comes undone so somehow you gotta unscrew that no that's not a screw what the heck um i'm not too sure i i've not played around with this to be fair i i i've not really i quickly fired it up made sure it powered on and that's it um so but operating instructions let's have a quick look see if we can get this thing to work um oh they did do white ones of these as well by the way um and i do also have one somewhere um and the white one actually is in remarkably better condition than this one 
um because i bought that and i even i was impressed as to how good a condition it was i remember that but uh, there you there you go there's both handsets there display units the, the sort of the screen on, on one side and the other um not really sure what else i can show you uh these phones are so old that um i would actually have to study this manual to to get it to work uh, staples are rusty as well um so yeah um but if you guys know um of, of how to use this um certainly there's a list of all service depots there um uh, you drop me a comment um i wouldn't know where to start with one of these um it's not doing what i thought it would do on the card so but anyway um short little video of this um, i don't want to rant on too long um but yeah, um, if you like the fun of the video, give me a thumbs up as always. If you haven't subscribed, um, watch last week's video um, about the free Nokia phones. Um, I don't need to remind you what to do. But um, I've I've been flooded with with uh, with requests and 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 stuff about uh, about the free Nokia's I'm going to give up give out when I hit a thousand subscribers. Um, I appreciate everybody that wants to buy them. They're not for sale though. They're just not for sale. Because if I start selling these phones, it's no longer a competition. It's a case of the guy with the most money is going to get the phone. And I want to give everybody a fair chance, uh, you know, to, to get one of these phones. Because, uh, you know, there's a lot of new collectors out there. And a lot of people probably who started collecting after the 9300 was released. Or even the 9210 or the 9110 or whatever it is, uh, the communicators. So, um, you know, it, it's just fair that i you know i don't I, you know if i wanted to sell them i would sell them but they're not for sale because well i want to give them away uh you know if you want to buy one i'm sure there's some on ebay uh maybe not box but certainly I, i'm sure i sure i'm sure i found some on ebay and they don't sell for much either you know i i think i saw one for like 40 50 bucks uh you know without a box just a charger and the phone so they're, they're not that valuable uh so but but you know um you got to respect the the fact that I, I don't i don't you know i don't want to accept any money for them because this is you know it's going to be a giveaway the moment you start taking money or you know you, that's that's then it no longer becomes a, a level playing field for everybody you know there, there's quite young collectors out there you know certainly i've had emails from from 15 16 year olds that just started collecting they're really into it and um you know there's no way they could afford to buy you know a nokia um, and then you got people that are seasoned, you know, the, the, the you know, the, the elite collectors like myself, you know, a thousand phone plus, um, and they could quite easily pay for the handset. Um, and, and that's not what it's about. You know, um, I kind of want to give back and if the more I start taking money, then it's no longer giving back. But anyway, I appreciate everybody, I appreciate everybody's interest. I know there's a lot of people that wanting to get these phones. Uh, I want to do this as fairly as possible. I haven't quite worked out how I'm going to do this yet. Um, but stay tuned. I, I will let you guys know in due course anyway, because um, I'm not quite at the thousand subscribers yet. So um, keep watching and uh, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. I'll see you guys next week.